Hi everybody, this is Craig Tanner for the Mindful Eye and the Daily Critique. Today's image was submitted by Francis, who's an intermediate photographer from Texas. Francis says he shot this image on a hike to the top of a mountain in a park in Canada that was supposed to have a spectacular panoramic view and he essentially got fogged out and rained out and he saw these flowers and decided to try and juxtapose the splash of color here against the ranger station that's on the top of the mountain. Francis shot this with an Olympus E620. That's a four-third sensor camera, more of a square format, and you're seeing that here. You have the chance on the camera to pick some other crops, but this is the native file format. A lot of people like this more uh, square sensor, more square look. It's interesting to see that here. We don't see many images submitted with a four-third sensor. Fun to see it. And Francis uh, was working, as far as exposure goes, at ISO 1000 and f22 and 1 3 20th of a second. Uh, under questions and comments, Francis says, how could the image have been better? In particular, how could the composition be improved? How, to, how do you take interesting pictures in wet, fairly dark and flat conditions? Boy, there are a lot of different things that we could talk about. Um, I would talk about the technical first, but the technical is actually going to tie into some suggestions that I have about how we might approach this if we were looking to shoot it in a different way. Um, one of the things that I wanted to say today is, you know, the daily critique is about the language of design. Um, and we really come from a traditional place. And by that, I mean, we're, we're really talking about photographing striking things or things that are beautiful to the photographer or visually exciting in a uh, visually exciting sort of unified um, kind of a way. So the daily critique is, is specific. It's specific to the language of design you know, specific to sort of this traditional type of photography. If we were just talking about a documentary shot, I think it's a fascinating shot. I think Francis has done a great job of capturing um, the color and the ranger station and giving me a sense of a slice of this environment. The water droplets on the flowers, a uh, really nice layer of information that really adds a lot to the way I feel about this. Th this definitely seems foggy, but having the water there cools the whole thing off even more, has a bigger psychological effect on me, and it's just really beautiful seeing the specular highlights on the drops of water. It adds a whole other texture to it. A lot, of, a lot of other things to like, just besides the subject matter itself and, and the simple straightforward framing here. Um, one is complementary color, really beautiful. Just green and magenta classic color pair from the printer's color wheel that we see quite a bit in, uh, in nature. And the other thing that I'm enjoying is quality of line. Both the contouring lines, obviously the flowers make a really beautiful shape here because of their real exciting contouring lines. And in some respects, whatever type flower this is, that sort of rough torn edge works pretty well with the boughs of these fir trees and even with the shape of the ranger station. Um, there's also an implied pathway along the flowers. It's pretty beautiful. This is kind of an S-curve. There's quite a bit of dynamic movement in the shot. A lot of things to like. Um, how could the image have been better? I just think about variations, you know. Um, one of the things that I wanted to say today was just it's really cool to hear Francis's story and to say he went up to shoot this big view and then this is what he was left with and he kept shooting anyway. It might seem, you know, sort of okay, yeah, sure, but so much of the time it's so easy to get shut down by something like this and just trying to cultivate more and more of a mindset where it's really not about uh, a destination in photography, but shooting all the time. So that's one very powerful thing that could make you a lot more creative. And if you practice this, the more you shoot in quote unquote ordinary situations and the more you're rewarded with pictures that speak to you and speak to other people, it really starts to, to free you up to be a lot more productive. Um, if I want to start pushing this more towards a sense of design and more towards just uh, the feeling of unified beauty, I would want to simplify it. Um, one of the things that's happening for me that I think is kind of hard to get away with is this idea th that's sort of cut off in the frame. Um, it's th one of the things that's happening for me, you know, I'm always thinking about balance when I go to sort of think about unity. So I'll think top to bottom. I'll start with the top because top has the most weight. And we really sort of come in and do this kind of thing in an image when we're looking at it. So I'll also look big time at the top in terms of left to right. 
Uh, you know, lots of studies will say, well, if, if all things being equal, we'll hit here, go here, come down on a diagonal, and come back up. Maybe the first thing that we do, all things being equal. This has a lot of weight over here. And one of the things that's happening is this is so heavy, and we're already pushed out over here. And then this just feels like it's impossible for it to balance what's happening on this side. This image would be dramatically helped by trees that came up and sort of framed this on both sides. It would really help to keep our eye in. Um, that's one thing that I think about. When it, once I start thinking about trying to manage that top part, which is going to be very, very difficult because it's very contrasty. It's got a lot of weight. There's a house sitting up there. We already have the mass of the top pushing down. Is just getting closer, getting out a macro lens. You know, if I could think about sort of a perfect kit for going out and shooting landscapes if I wanted to do beauty, it would be a super wide, maybe a fixed 20 or 24, a zoom that would be in that range where I could get effectively to around 20 or 24 or even wider would be great. And then uh, some kind of dedicated macro lens that gives me some working distance. In my case, I carry a Canon 100 uh, f2.8 macro lens. and my my tendency would be to come in here and shoot on these flowers with the water droplets and the and the perfect light for a situation like this. Don't know if it was windy. It might have been. When I look at the technical data and I see that uh, Francis turned the ISO all the way up to 1,000 and got to 1 3 20th of a second, it, it may have been windy, but maybe not. Looking at the fog, don't know if this is cloud, low clouds or fog, but I would seriously look at just something in here that's more abstract. I also would look at a variation with the 100 where I didn't shoot macro, but I shot something that was more uh, right in here, just seeing if there's something that I can pull off in sort of this middle ground area, and working on this is just the design. The other thing this one really makes me think about is it sure would be neat to be there when the lights came on here. That would add a third color. So much of the time I'm looking for a third color idea. Two colors can be a little bit static sometimes. As much as I like the complementary pair here, having one more color would really add not only color depth to this, but psychological depth. It would really help to, I think, balance the shot out, but I have no concept if that's you know, a reality. If, you're, if it was a potential reality in France's situation, if you're open to changing image content, you could create a lighting effect and turn a light on up there. That'll make a lot of people sick that I even said that, but nah, that's all right. Um, I don't want to make people sick, but come on, you guys. It's just photography. Um, boy, this image makes me think about so many different things, but here are the three main takeaways I'd really encourage you to think about. Take your camera with you everywhere and get into the habit of photographing along the way. And two, um, work, the, work a subject. You see these flowers. If you're really trying to grow your photography, try to pull off a literal shot. Uh, try to pull off uh, something that's more abstract. I would have gone in the, in the other direction, even shooting it literal here. I think that I would have focused on the flowers to be sharp and thrown the top part of the shot out of focus and shot at a very shallow depth of field to try and de-emphasize the weight of the potential uh, contrast and everything overwhelming the flowers. Shooting things in different ways is a way to practice composition. Um, and then the third thing here would be coming in and abstracting. Um, three, three very powerful takeaways that you could get from the video today. I want to say a big thank you to Francis for sharing a really cool image, uh, very beautiful color, great quality of light for this kind of shot, really neat image in terms of story. And we hope to see you again very soon on the Mindful Eyes Daily Critique.